Welcome to the Charlotte Mason Show, a podcast dedicated to discussing Miss Mason's philosophy, principles, and methods. It is our hope that each episode will leave you inspired and offer practical wisdom on how to provide this rich living education in your modern homeschool. So pull up a chair. We're glad you're here. Today's episode of the Charlotte Mason Show is brought to you by MediShare. Find out more about this affordable Christian alternative to traditional health insurance at MediShare.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Charlotte Mason Show. I'm your host, Julie Ross, and I'm here today with Brianna Goss of Solfa Sofa. And if you are like me and never heard of Solfa before Charlotte Mason or still have really not very much understanding of it, I think you'll appreciate today's episode. So thank you, Rihanna, for really yes. willing to come on and talk to us about this. I'm um, excited to talk about it. I know, and you're so knowledgeable. So you're such the perfect person to have on. Can you just give us a little introduction to who you are and sure. kind of let's start with who you are in your homeschool journey, and then we can talk about some of your musical background and stuff. Sure. In my homeschool journey, I have a a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. They're both considered form two, but my 10-year-old, I still treat pretty much like a form one student. She's still developing (laughs) her reading skills and things like that. So we've been homeschooling the whole time. And my mom actually had the pink volumes when she homeschooled me. So I'm a second generation homeschooler and uh, she bought the books, the Charlotte Mason volumes through a catalog. I think it was, she said the Mary pride catalog. I remember that. Yeah. So um, myself here, but yes, (laughs) So she, she didn't have the, the pleasure of having the internet when we were homeschooling. So the support for Charlotte Mason wasn't, as easily accessible as it is today. So I'm glad that I homeschool now and not. Or even just the the community, right? Finding other people who are like, and you're doing what? Exactly. (laughs) So did she just have to kind of, based on her understanding of reading through the volumes, kind of piece things together then all on her own? She did. I would say that she took um, some of the big ideas from Charlotte Mason and, and implemented that in our homeschool as far as nature study, outdoor all the time, good books, but we did have the traditional, um, like we did a Becca and Alpha yeah. Omega. There wasn't a whole so, lot of those places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so is it so awesome just to be able to like call her and ask her questions and stuff? Oh, for sure. It is. I, and going through all of her stuff. Um, so when she sold her house, I went through all of our old homeschool oh. things like papers <laughs> that I had written in seventh yeah. grade and stuff like that. So <laughs> Some of that stuff, though, I mean, homeschool moms don't hold on to yeah. all of your stuff for forever because once you do have to go through your parents' things, yes. it's just <laughs> more than they you, you would need to, I guess. So. Yeah, but some of it is so sweet. Like, um, actually, yeah. my two girls that were home for break for college, we I told them, I'm like, okay, I moved all this stuff here, but it's time we're going to condense. You get one big bin. Yeah. Or what you want to keep. And then the rest. That's of- my plan too. I'm going to have Bye-bye. one bin for my kids. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, we had different ones throughout the years, you know, but then it kind of, they had several boxes by the time they graduated high school. And so, yeah. uh, like we need, but it was so sweet just to read through some of their things that they wrote when they were little know, and they is. wanted to see. And, you know, um, that's why I love doing like the weekly narration notebook thing that we do is just, you know, you see their, their thinking and um, yeah their drawings and just what they think is important and stuff like that. So it's precious to hang on to that. Well, that is really cool that you have that had that experience. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so tell us a little bit uh, kind of about your music background and what led you to do what you're doing now. Well, yeah, it kind of um, moves into that really well with talking about me homeschooling. I was able to really focus on my passions, which are music. So I practiced piano for hours. Um, That's awesome. I, participated in several piano competition type of things. And so when it was time for college, I knew that I wanted to major in music and I had the music to perform at the entrance exam type of things, you know, (laughs) auditions. Yeah. So that was my 
um, college experience was majoring in music education. And I um, loved all of our music history classes. That was probably my favorite. And then using solfege within a secondary education, you had the sight singing and ear training classes for several years. And, and I think that helped me fall in love with solfa. I didn't really experience it much as a homeschooler um, growing up. Right. We were in children's choirs, but they didn't do solfege. And then when I was in college, I was also a student conductor of the university's children's chorale, and we used solfa for that. So that's my background. And then teaching in the public schools for 10 years, I also used solfege in my choirs and in my music classes. Okay. So for like the non-musical people, what is solfa, solfege? So solfege is, I think they're all interchangeable. Solfa is probably a more outdated term. If you were to talk to a music teacher nowadays, they would use the word solfege. Okay. Um, But solfa was the term that was used as the title of the book written by the Kerwins, which is what Charlotte Mason was familiar with. So if you look at any Charlotte Mason things, it'll say solfa. Okay. Okay. Just for that. Okay. So can you explain a little bit about what, what they are though? Yeah. So they are a, it's a system of singing and music theory instead of just naming a note on a staff, like, Oh, that's an A that's a C. Um, they have a system of tonality, which is the, the word for when you're listening to a song. And this is, I like to explain to my students, whenever we finish a song, we have that home tone. We have that note that's like, if the song did not finish on this note, it would not sound finished. Mm. And so that home tone is do. And we go up from there. If you've watched The Sound of Music, <laughs> you know, from do, a deer, a female deer. So and that's that's usually that's the introduction. Right. Whenever that's someone's right. talking about what is solfege, we can point back to that movie. <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. Rodgers and Hammerstein, for writing <laughs> The Sound of Music. So we can have that, that knowledge of what solfa is. But um, the Kerwins, who wrote the Tonic Solfa book that Charlotte Mason was familiar with, they used the hand signs that were um, created by Sarah Glover um, even earlier. So I have a history of Solfa on my website that you can kind of trace back all the way to the Middle Ages with Guido wow. D'Arezzo, who was a monk that um, developed the system. So it's a very old system yeah. of learning music. And um, yeah, so and that's what it is. If someone went today, right, uh, joined, like you're saying, like a children's chorale or took music lessons, is it something that's commonly taught? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's so. Definitely. Yeah. Um, maybe not in, maybe some church choirs probably don't really use it, but in the academic world, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so why did Charlotte Mason include that in her programs? I believe that it is because of the principles of music, just like she was so passionate about education is a method, not a system. Education is based on principles, not this cut and dry, do this, 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 this. Um, And I believe that for music, we have that same idea. If you can learn the principles of music and those principles being rhythm, melody and maybe even tonality or beauty those principles will take you far in your music education so by learning a solfa system we are addressing both of those uh, rhythm and melody principles of learning how to look at music and being able to find the melody the melodic line okay yeah. Um, and it, it trains the ear to be able to hear. Mm-hmm. And I think that, yeah, I, I think that fits really well kind of in with her picture study or nature mm-hmm. study, right? You're training your eye to observe mm-hmm. and to notice um, by training your ear to, you you know, you notice those things in the music that you're listening to. Mm-hmm. You didn't have that training. You're just like, oh, it sounds like yeah. it all sounds the same. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
and you know, I've got a story about that. I've led a co-op for years. And uh, one of the moms said to me, how do you hear that? And I thought, how do you not hear it? We were <laughs> listening to, I think it was a string quartet. And I was telling the students, hey, I really want you to pay attention and listen for when you hear each of the strings enter to where there's just one string player and then two and then three and then four. And uh, that was a concept that she had never thought of and yeah. couldn't what makes pick you out and hear. It makes you appreciate it. That yeah. much more, right when you know what, yeah. what you're what you're listening for and what you're appreciating. Yeah. Um, and now, what would you say to the parent who's like, okay, my kid, we don't, we're not in a choir, we're, we're not going to learn any instruments. Why should I care about this? <laughs> you don't know if your child right. might develop an interest and a passion in it. I I don't like math, but I'm not going to keep math <laughs> for my kids because I don't. And when, he, when my kids get into higher level, if they're gifted in that, mm-hmm. I will look for other resources if I can't do it myself. Right. And that's what I wanted Sofa Sofa to be. You know, I'm not expecting parents to be able to know what I know because I have years and years of training right. and education and experience of doing it. But I can offer this to parents so that they can try it. Yeah. You know, there's no... There's no Charlotte Mason police. If you don't do sulfur, <laughs> yeah. it's going to come after you. But hey, if there's something accessible, if there's something that's easily added to your morning time, why not try? I try to keep all of my videos under 10 minutes. So it's easy to, to watch and participate with. So I and I think that's the beauty of the Charlotte Mason feast, right? Is right. the fact that you are offering this you know, wide and generous education, you know, how big is the room that their feet are put in and you don't know what your child will latch onto or love or passion. So you're giving them all these different options, right. Um, Mm -hmm. And giving them that love and appreciation for music through singing it. And I agree with you. I mean, I think in the younger grades, please correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, it was what, twice a week. Yeah. There's um, there's a post I have as well. We can put in the show notes Mm -hmm. of what a music lesson would have looked like. And um, I'm going to ask you that question. (laughs) Yeah. And it's not 30 minutes of salsa, you know, so, so you don't have to think, Oh my gosh, I can't do this for a whole 30 minutes. You can do it for 10 minutes once a week. Yes. I love that. Right. And we all, and I first think of it, it's like these little grains of sand, right. These little ideas that we're putting into our children that who knows what fruit will come out of them or what connections we'll make between, you know, this composer and that thing that they're learning about somewhere else. You know? Exactly. Yes. Um, Today's episode is brought to you by a gentle feast. A gentle feast is a complete curriculum for grades one through 12 that is family centered, inspired by Miss Mason's programs and philosophy and rooted in books, beauty, and biblical truth. You can find out how smooth and easy days are closer than you think at agentlefeast.com. If you don't mind, would you kind of walk us through a little bit? Like if I was in morning time, wanted to add on sofa. Yeah. What would we do? So, so what I would suggest is going through the progression on the Sofa Sofa website. I have three units and I'd like to make more, but honestly, I feel like if you can do these three units that I have on the website, you're set. Um, You can pursue it further with private music lessons. Um, But if you are able to sight sing some of the simple melodies, Mm -hmm. listen to hear and be able to tell back, what some of those melodies are in those intervals. So the musical word interval is the space between two notes. And that's what the whole tonic solfa, kadai, all of music educators around the country that are teaching in the schools, they start on this sequential understanding. We're not going to ask you to be able to tell the solfege of a whole song, you know, right. but could you pick out any time that you hear in the melody, it goes and know that that interval, the space between those two notes is so me. And then you can go from there. So there's like little things and a music teacher would be able to find that in a folk song or a hymn and be able to lead that. And that's what I do with my co-ops. 
I don't do that with the Sulfa Sofa program. It's more about just interval training. But if you have a local music teacher that can maybe get a group of homeschoolers together and take it even further for mm -hmm. those music lessons, then that's great if you can. Just do the activities on my website. I've got games and, and all sorts of things. So um, I have these, and this is going to be video. We'll have to link it in the audio podcast, but I have little booklets that you can print off for free. So this is what I did with my printer. You'll have to, you know, print it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't offer booklets to mm -hmm. mail out, but each unit. So this is unit one, which has seven lessons. Unit two has seven lessons and unit three has seven lessons. So um, I don't suggest going through them like once a week and just forgetting about them. I'd say even reviewing and understanding what some of those principles are as you go through will be helpful. Okay. So one unit, would that take a year? I'd say a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I would, um, with the resources, there's flashcards. So you could watch the video mm -hmm. with your children and then use those principles that were taught, those skills that were taught in that lesson for several weeks without a video. You okay. know what I mean? Like you yeah. could look at inside here, there's places where you can see the, the words that, or the letters that stand for so and me, mm -hmm. and just practice singing those Yeah, until there's accuracy. And I mean, if, if your kids are really quick on picking that up and have great accuracy and move at a faster pace, you could do that. Yes. So Charlotte Mason starts off a form one. I that yes, all form one, not, not year one. I think yeah. at the very beginning, they did just singing games. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Um, maybe like, when they're seven or eight. Yeah. Okay. Like year two. Now, did they do that all the way through? Or like you were saying, at, a, at some point, that's going to transfer over to actual formal music lessons. Yeah, uh, the tonic sulfa method that the Kerwins wrote, um, it did go through. I mean, like the last chapter would have been things that I would not have learned in high school. It's oh, more wow. collegiate level. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> but as far as like nowadays in yeah. music education, since yeah. I'm, I've been in the public schools. I know what, what students are doing in America. Yeah. Um, I would say that up until fifth grade, it's more about simple melodies, being able to tell what we call the diatonic scale, the do, re, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Mm -hmm. In middle school and high school, choral teachers would use solfa as warm-ups for um, their choir rehearsals, and they might do more um, what I would call accidentals using sharps and flats and mm -hmm. understanding the relationships between key signatures. So, but I feel like that is more formal music lessons. I feel right. like a home, Form, like a formal choir that. would be in, in middle school. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So these, but I mean, if you have older kids, you know, and they've never learned any of this, mm -hmm. you know, definitely bring them in for morning time. It's something you can do as a whole family. Right. Yeah. Oh yes. So I have, when I first started this project, I think it was 2016 and um, I obviously geared it towards little ones because that mine were little yeah. <laughs> and, and I heard feedback from a lot of homeschool moms like, Oh, you know, I like the idea of this just being short and sweet and just being based on interval training and not incorporating folk songs and hymns and everything within that. But you're really like, your audience is young people. You can tell, <laughs> yeah, no, you know, my personality, I do, <laughs> I do gear toward the younger ones, but, um, but I heard their feedback and I created, I went back and did unit one again, and I recorded those videos again. And on the YouTube, it's called um, unit one for older beginners. Oh, I love so, that. Okay. you know, I, I re-recorded yeah. a lot of the same material okay. and I just made sure that my demeanor <laughs> what is like, that hey, boys and girls. a 13 year old <laughs> yeah exactly so but that's great yeah I didn't know that so that's great if someone yeah. has a little child and they want to kind of incorporate that 
So what do you think are the benefits, not just from like a music perspective, just but like academically or as a whole person from incorporating? Uh, Academically, um, I would say like that spatial reasoning Mm -hmm. and the same, same reason I think piano lessons are wonderful. So I teach private piano lessons as well. And music reading is really good for the brain. Oh, yeah. So you have that. Um, that relationship between what your eyes are taking in, like when we're talking about sight reading, what your eyes are taking in, relating it to your brain and for the piano coming out your fingers, yeah. for the vocalist coming out with your singing. But I do make my piano students sing as well, because I think that inner ear understanding is really yeah. good for, for spatial reasoning and for logic. Um, math, rhythm is math. So I teach rhythm concepts within um, like I have these, I have these, uh, rhythm flashcards, which are really good. And so I always suggest that as well to, um, uh, any of your children that might be reluctant singers, you can still use the program to work on rhythm and to understand rhythm, which is, um, great for math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and would this have been something that like the governesses that Charlotte Mason were trained training at um, her school they would have yeah they had from what from my research it was a trained person leading the classes um but I just meant like would they have grown up doing this would this be something that's culturally like kind of like oh yeah we know what that is we do this and or was it more specific okay I should know. I knew yeah. I knew in Victorian times singing was definitely more um right. of a trained art and something that people would be trained in as they grew up. Yes. As opposed yeah. to it is now, either you're like you're born with it, we might put you in some lessons. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you're saying, yeah. like music education once a week in a public school setting, but that's still mm-hmm. not necessarily focusing on singing. Right. No, I think that um times have definitely changed since then as far as what the common public would know and be educated in, but what's not changed is that even within her schools, the PNEU, it was a trained teacher teaching the music classes and not just something that was led on the mothers to take it on. Like, I don't, I've I've researched a little bit of the like mothers, what was it called? The mother's university or something I can't remember oh, the name of it. Yeah. yes right mm-hmm. the, the mother's the, co- like, the, group. the yeah. correspondence so she yeah. did have like a correspondence curriculum for mothers to yeah. teach their children at home but I don't know if solfa was included in that or if it was just folk songs that were used in the correspondence courses okay so that book that you're referring to that was in the programs for the mothers to try to use at home Oh, so the mothers did use tonic sulfa. I okay. believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, originally it was training these governesses to go do it. And I just didn't mm-hmm. know if that would be something that like, they would be like, oh yeah, I already know this. Like people just grew up learning this at that time. Yeah. Period. They might already know it, but it would still maybe take some understanding of okay. how to teach it. And right. Right. To, you know. Right. But it's just more, it was more common. I think to seeing it was like entertainment yes. and I'm just going by yes. like, yeah, like, like even books, but <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. We didn't have back then they didn't have the, the screens to uh, distract yeah. from Spotify to listen. To them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to all sing together, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, um, you know, I didn't, I still wish I could sing, you know, and even not like I'm going to go up on stage and have a rock concert. Of course, there's this little part, mm-hmm. of it, which is I was a rock and roll singer. But yeah. um, other than that dream um, to, to just be able to like sing at church in my seat and feel comfortable. People around me aren't like cringing, you know, and so oh, I think sure. that that's a gift that we can give our children is just being able to hear the notes yes. sing well enough that when they're singing around other people. Right. Mm-hmm. they can carry a, a tune <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's um, definitely a part of the human condition I think to be able to be yeah. musical yes and, and that's those like, gifts that God has given us yeah yeah for sure well I did read an article that um was talking about dementia patients and mm. teaching them how to play a musical instrument actually grew new brain cells it didn't heal the ones that were already damaged but they were right. growing more brain cells at a higher rate 
than that is amazing. they were before. Isn't that amazing? And so you're very proud of me. Tomorrow is my first guitar lesson. <laughs> hey, good for you. That's wonderful. Yes, we'll do it. I won't say anything. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm gonna increase some brain cells. <laughs> yes. Well, there's yeah. I, I think that um, and I just recently read something about we don't do things because we need to be the best at it. Like some things like painting. I mean, I took up watercolors just a couple of years ago and I, I never did because I thought, Oh, I'm not good at that. And so I never attempted, but through a Charlotte Mason education. And I think, you know, there's value to all of these avenues of who a person is and in the arts. And, um, and so I took up watercolors and just a little bit every week. I was like, oh, wow, I, I can actually do this. And I feel like the same yeah. thing is for music. Even if mm-hmm. you're not aspiring to be the next person on the Billboard yeah. Top 100 <laughs> or performer at the Carnegie Hall, but we can do this because it enriches our soul. Mm, yeah. And that's such a great way to put it, Like you know. We're not just making sure everybody knows their math facts and that they can read X, Y, Z. You know, we are educating a whole person and that means Mm -hmm. how to grow their soul. And that's through the beautiful music and the Mm -hmm. the artwork like you're talking about. And yeah, yeah, that, and, and I think it's great that your kids are seeing you try new things and learn skills that you don't have and go, okay, well, I don't (laughs) know how to do brush drawing either, but we're going to try it. And there's beauty and enriches our lives. Right. And some people are like, well, that's a waste of time. Right. You know, 20 minutes a week, let's say you do 10, so 10 minute music sofa lesson Mm -hmm. twice a week is 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I mean, think about it. I scroll on my phone for 20 minutes. I go way longer than that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or yeah. we're watching you way more than that, you know, Yeah, mm-hmm. but just the, the, the gift that you're giving them in that short little period of time and how it does yes. will enrich the personhood. And again, yes. like with everything with trauma, it's not something you're going to see right away. So your right. kids might be like, Oh my gosh, I love this. This is the best thing ever. Thank you, mom, for teaching us. <laughs> 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 Maybe if your kids aren't like mine, but you know, it's, it's kind of changing their appetite, especially I think too. um, the music we listen to now is so different. Right. And, you know, learning about these composers and yes. things that music was like, we never even yeah. heard anything like this in our lives, mom. Yeah. Yeah. I love the connections that that makes. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, you know, since I've been homeschooling and implementing composer study and solfa and all these things that my kids will just out of the blue connect it to something that they had learned and I, thought, or, oh, I love it when my kids like listen to a commercial and they're like mom isn't that Vivaldi <laughs> yeah, yes, I love that those <laughs> moments are so sweet yes. <laughs> um well do you have any final um encouragement for a parent who is kind of intimidated maybe they don't have musical background or maybe they're like me who can't sing <laughs> and they're like how in the world am I supposed to teach this and do this with my children? Is it really worth my time? I think that it is worth your time. But it, like I said, there is no Charlotte yeah, Mason right. police. So if you try it and you don't like it, I think that's that's totally up to the parent. But I just, I wanted to make something that was easy. Like I'm not asking you to devote 30 minutes of your week or anything and and, and, and the principles that I would never yeah. be able to do that. Like if I had to read that book and try to figure out how to teach it to my kids, right. that would never right. happen. <laughs> yeah. So try it for a little while and see if it's something that your children enjoy and want to pursue. And then look at, I, I personally think piano lessons are the best. So if you can't afford piano lessons with a teacher, check and see if the teacher incorporates some solfa within the piano lessons. Um, I know that Hoffman online, the piano yeah. lessons online, he uses solfege as okay. well Okay. in some of his lessons. So um, when it comes to music theory, I do think that piano lessons are wonderful. And especially if you have older beginners Instead of doing my solfa lessons, if you can get them piano lessons, I think that's wonderful because that really does teach you those principles of music theory, which is what Charlotte Mason wanted the children to be able to do through their solfa lessons. Um, 
And then with younger students, if you if you can't do solfa, at least do folk songs and yeah, hymns so with them yeah. and singing games. Yeah. Uh, so like in my own classroom, if I were doing a 30 minute lesson with the students, we would warm up with some rhythms. We would warm up with some hand signs, warming our voices up. And then I loved to give them a piece of music that they had to figure out what was the rhythm. They had to figure out what was the melody with just the S and M listed on it. And after we decoded everything, which is a big part of the Kadai training, when we decoded it, we would put the words to it of what the actual song was. And we would play a game with it because I just love games. And so I tried to make everything a game in my classroom. (laughs) So those things, um, they just, it's like an onion, you know, just peeling layer after layer. And, um, and solfa is just one of those layers in a music education that I think um, benefits the whole person. Yeah. I think that's a good point too. I think people can kind of assume that, okay, that, that was, we do this 10 minute solfa lesson and we listen to some composers and, maybe a folk song or him, and then that's all there is. But Charlotte Mason had more to it than that. That's what you're kind of saying. Am I right? I think, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And wanting them to kind of delve deeper into the theory and observe observation. And yes. And you said like telling back. Yeah. So if, if they had, oh, let me see like another thing like this. So a, a flashcard like this, if you're looking for me left to right, is this, this, and this. I think it's the same on the, on the screen. So I see this little S right here is stands for so. And so I know it's just so in me notes, but it doesn't start on so. It actually starts on me. So I can think so me. I can start here. Me, me, so. And exercises like that, they're training your eyes, training your brain. Yeah. Um, like I said, that spatial awareness um, of the development in the brain really good what did you mean by telling back like that to me sounds like narration so um, you narrate a piece of music well yeah in your own words yeah. I think I, I would do that maybe more with like listening to a composer like their right. song and right. think oh what did I like imagine in my mind while I was listening to that music I assume um, you know, I would think music. solfa is more dictation it's more Ooh, you know okay you are looking at something and then giving it exactly exactly back yeah yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't really I wanted to clarify that okay that helps with the solfa skills um I don't really think that it's up to interpretation like it's either when you see that I wanted wanted so or not (laughs) solfa is more more dictation you're you're repeating back exactly Mm -hmm. but you know listening to a hymn or a piece of composition right you can tell back in your own words yeah. what you heard, what the rhythm was and that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I just want to clarify. When I hear tell back, I automatically think narration in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's no, that's good to clarify that. I've been trained. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so where can people go to find some of these amazing free resources that you graciously have blessed the Charlotte Mason community with? So all of the videos are on YouTube, so you can okay. watch them on YouTube, but I actually put site together so that it's organized and you can see unit one. These are the concepts that we're learning. And these are the resources that you can download that are specific to that learning. Um, And I also found a really great website called Musicator, which uses Musicator. It's M-U-S-I-C-A-T-O-R. Okay. And um, And it has some really neat um, listening activities that you would do using Solfege. And so I made a video of myself walking someone through that website. Because if you just go to the website, I actually don't know very many people from the United States use it because there are all these exercises like with Russian, what is the Russian alphabet called? Cyrillic alphabet. (laughs) So, (laughs) okay. I don't even know what that says. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I don't know if it's a website used for many people in America, but it's really, really cool. And so I made a video of myself walking a parent through that website so you can see how how you you can use use for review once they have the skills. Yes, exactly. Like you can watch my unit one videos, understand what am I trying to 
teach the student and then use the flashcards, use the um, musicator examples within that unit. Mm -hmm. And you can also take live classes from me as well. (laughs) I was just thinking that like COVID really plus music education that you don't have to haul I mean, I remember when my kids were little hauling all the little ones to piano lessons and like waiting right. in the car with everybody, you know, like mm-hmm. how is you don't have to do that? It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I do, I do offer live in-person classes and, um, and I have that on the Sofa Sofa website as well. Okay, it's yeah. through, um, the Charlotte Mason co-op at Charlotte Mason plenary. So you'll have to register in time, you know, like, cause yeah. all the classes are scheduled. So, cause they're live. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's so great. Well, thank you so much for kind of explaining this and thank you, Julie. breaking it down. It sounds very um, doable. I was very blessed that with some of my kids, um, the church car that we're in taught. So yes. was like, check. <laughs> Me too. My kids, I have my kids in a choir and the choir director used to soulfish. So I'm like, great. I don't have to do it. <laughs> But I did enjoy it before we got in that uh, when they were younger, just like the listening and like some of the little games and things that were um, mm-hmm. on some of the YouTube channels. Just it was just sweet, you know, yes. and I remember those funny little songs and things. And yeah, mm-hmm. but <laughs> there are resources, too. And like our choir, church choirs was free. So I was like, yes, yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's that experience, too, that yeah. it was really and, for me. and I would say too, I would love for my resources to be helpful to any, because there's plenty of musicians that are watching this podcast or listening that already know about music. Mm-hmm. And you can take the resources that I have on the website and start your own group, you know, yeah, go sure. through yeah. um, Soulfish lessons with some other homeschoolers of moms who would be like, oh, I really need yeah. somebody <laughs> else to to teach this and, you know, and help build your community that way too. Yeah. That'd be great. And it's fun. It's more fun to do it, Mm -hmm. you know, with other people too. Yes. Um, But also I don't feel like you have to have a music background to teach it. You can do it with Mm -hmm. the resources that you have. Yes. (laughs) It's called push play. I can do that. (laughs) And that, yeah, that was my passion. My passion was, okay, I have this knowledge. I want to give it to people who don't and just, you know, want to push play, want to use that. And they can um, spread the feast for their children. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for your work and doing that. And thank yeah. you for coming on and, and talking to us today. And we'll have all those um, links in the show notes. So you can get these resources and kind of try it um, with your family. Yes. Hopefully. So, Happy singing. You. I've got to end it just like I do a lot of my classes. Okay. And you have to sing. Goodbye. Because oh, <laughs> I will scare people. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you'd like to know more about the Charlotte Mason style of education, check out at gentlefeast.com and click on the learn more button for a free four day introduction course. I would love to meet you in 2022. I will be at all five of the great homeschool conventions. To find out more about attending one of those, go to greathomeschoolconventions.com. If you'd like the show notes for today's episode, you can find those at homeschooling.mom and click on the Charlotte Mason show. Until next time, I hope your days are full of books, beauty, and biblical truth. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.